That's it. How's it, chaps? And welcome back to the Burton Builds Garage. Today's episode is a follow-on from the previous Burton Builds episode where we built a workbench. Now, this is it here. It has been completed and I'm pretty happy with it. But specifically in that episode, I installed castering wheels on the bottom of the workbench that was to make it mobile because I've got quite a small working space and I've got to kind of put it away every time uh, after I'm finished using it. Uh, so I needed to make that raising and lowering mechanism and I said I would walk you through exactly how it works. So let's get started. So there we have it, chaps. So that's the assembly of this somewhat over-engineered workbench. Now, of course, it doesn't have any sides on yet. Uh, you guys have just seen the montage where the sides and everything were done. So I've shot this uh, slightly out of sequence. Reason being is so that I can explain exactly what is happening here. So the problem that we had, or uh, well, the solution that we needed to come up with, was to raise the table. And uh, what I've come up with is using a dolly uh, underneath the table. And then we needed to push this dolly away from the table uh, thus raising the table off the ground. So we did this by using a lead screw. Uh, we've got a lead screw along the top of the frame or the underside of the workbench, however you want to look at that. And the lead screw is fastened on either side, so it doesn't actually shift. Um, it shifts a nut. And it shifts that nut from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. And of course that nut is welded onto this inner frame. It's kind of a triangle piece here. And uh, it shifts that from left to the right-hand side. And all that is doing is it's transferring the movement from the top to the bottom of the frame. 
Now, the way this works is uh, we've got a cam section and the cam when is normally in this level position when the table is on the ground. And when we want the table to raise, we need to move this cam from the level position into an extended position. So move it through 90 degrees. And uh, the way we do that is just by rotating it. So what we've done here, as we said, we moved, um, we've jogged this frame from left hand side to right hand side, and we've transferred the movement to the bottom of the frame here. So we're jogging this bottom bar from the left hand side to the right hand side, and uh, that is causing our cam section here to rotate through 90 degrees. And when it does, as we've said before, it raises the table. So let's have a closer look at exactly what is happening. For our lead screw, I used the standard M12 mild steel threaded bar and I greased that up quite nicely and that uh, was just to make sure that everything runs nice and smooth. Now I didn't go for a high tensile bar or a proper ball lead screw uh, because of generally the cost of a ball lead screw and this is not a high cycle high load uh, use so I don't think this lead screw is going to wear out all that quickly. To rotate the lead screw I decided to go for a hand crank lever. This way I don't have to rely on any batteries or any other source of power to raise or lower the table. It uses a 19 millimeter socket or a three quarter inch socket for all your American folk. There are two sets of locking nuts. The set on the left is to hold the lead screw in a single location relative to the table's frame. The second lock nut set provides a travel stop for when the table is standing on its own feet. Between the table's frame and the locking nuts are two white plastic washers sandwiched between two steel washers. Now, these washers form a type of thrust bearing. Proper needle or roller ball thrust bearings aren't expensive, and I could have used this, but I didn't have any on hand, so I opted for a more archaic approach of greased plastic washers, and they seem to be working just fine. The lead screw runs through a coupling nut which has been welded to a small triangular frame in order to convert the rotary motion into a linear motion. Now uh, this small frame then transfers the linear motion along the top of the table to the bottom edge of the table. I did this uh, because I wanted the hand crank to be at the top edge of the table but I needed that linear motion or linear force along the bottom edge of the table where uh, the mechanism was going, actually going to be working. I'm able to attach the hand crank onto either side of the table and I've designed it like this for convenience. At the center of the lead screw I included a support bushing in which the lead screw rotates. This bushing is attached to the table frame. The left to right linear motion along the bottom edge of the table is then transferred to an arm that links a cam or a lever at each side of the table. Now we can only see the right hand cam or lever arrangement here but it's exactly the same on the left hand side. You'll notice as the link arm moves from left to right it causes the cam or the lever arrangement to rotate and as it rotates through 90 degrees it pushes the table's frame away from the caster wheel dolly. This in turn raises the table off the ground. So now that I've explained how the mechanism works, I also said that we were going to do a weight test, uh, how much weight this thing can actually pick up. And uh, if I remember correctly, I might have mentioned 150, maybe 200 kilograms last time. So uh, for this test now, we've got myself, I'm 70 kilograms. Um, this bench is definitely 30 kilograms, uh, definitely. We've got uh, two 10 kilogram sandbags. So we've got 70 plus 30 is 100. And uh, we've got 110, 120. 10 liters of water, 130, and uh, we've got a 20 kilogram of gas here, that is uh, 150 kilograms so far. And uh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna hit the 200 kg mark, no problem. But, uh, you know, let's see what happens. You just have to bear with me now while I wind this thing up. I hope it's gonna work, I'm not gonna break. And uh, I, th I think we're in the air. Yep. Uh, we're definitely in the air, so what did I tell you? It was gonna hold 200 kilograms, no problem. You okay in there? Yeah, we're still fine. Okay, are you sure? Yep. Okay. Told you, 200 kgs, no problem. <laughs> so, uh, pretty happy with the build so far. Definitely worth putting in the extra effort for uh, all the extra supports and gussets and uh, to make it really, really strong.
chaps. That's it for today's episode, but not for the build of this workbench. Um, there are still three or four things that I want to do to the workbench uh, until it is, or before it is completed, should I say. And uh, the first thing is to install a vice. So we'll probably install a vice uh, on this side and then maybe a drop-down side on this side. Uh, it won't be a very sturdy drop-down side just to support long material when you're working on it. Um, the third thing that I was thinking of doing was maybe putting a rubber top uh, on the top here, it's also it's always nice to work on, um, you know, maybe like a five millimeter layer of rubber when you don't want to work on wood, uh, and then also to complete the steel top for when I'm welding. Um, I've still got the steel piece. If you remember back to the previous video, uh, we had a look at it there, and uh, I've still got to finish that up nicely. But otherwise, chaps, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It really does help me out, and thank you very much to all of my subscribers that always do watch my videos. Uh, I really do appreciate it please leave uh, comments in the comments section below i'd really like to hear from you guys uh, what do you think of how the workbench came out what do you think now of how the mechanism works now that uh, i've explained it and uh, yeah i suppose all that is left to say is uh, keep safe and well and we'll see you next time cheers